Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today, we've got a swing out arm to put on the bench. We're gonna have a swing a good time. I have been wanting one of these for a long time. This is a swing arm that mounts onto the bench so you can have a seat that swings out. Uh, now, there are a couple companies that make them and I would really like to get them, but they're rather expensive and I wanna do something that's a little bit more historical, kinda. Uh, this actually came out of a school lab and they had these mounted to the benches so that the seats would swing out. And I thought this was kinda cool. So I wanna actually clean this up. It is rusty, it is crunky, and it is noisy. So let's clean this up and make a new seat for it. Unfortunately, this seat goes squeaky, squeaky, squeaky when you uh, swing it back and forth, and I really don't want that. So we're gonna take this apart and de-rust it, clean it up, and of course, paint it, because this is wood by right. So normally I have to be very careful about taking things apart, making sure I know exactly how to put them back together, but in this case, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Pound, pound, pound. Before I take it to de-rust, I want to make sure I completely clean it off. I want to get rid of any gunk and anything that's on there. And there were some uh, paint spots and other things like that. A wire brush or a bad chisel take off pretty quickly. Just want to get it down to the point where the bath will, will do it well. I'm using Metal Rescue for this because um, it's a great one to work with and I can buy it locally. Um, I would prefer Evaporust. I tend to get more uses out of that, but uh, I haven't been able to find a place locally where I can purchase it. Even though there are quite a few stores around that most of the time carry it, mine do not. Um, so I'm going to put it in this and then I'm going to throw in a few other things to bring the water level up because uh, I have several other things that I'm de-rusting at the same time. For all of this, I'm going to take it over to the wire wheel then and clean it off. Uh, now, I could take this over and wire wheel it completely um, without doing the rust bath, but I prefer to actually do a rust bath first um, and then wire wheel it. just gets rid of a, a good bit more and you end up with a, a better surface in my opinion. So we're going to grind it all off. Um, this is something that uh, you, you got to take your time at it and do it slowly and patiently, otherwise you're going to run into issues. Then after that, we are going to take it over for painting. But uh, while we're waiting for painting, let's actually start working on the seat. I want to make something that has that sculpted bottom shape. Um, and I was originally planning on uh, um, carving the seat out to actually fully sculpt the seat. This is actually a large chunk of Ipe. Um, yeah, big, beefy stuff. <laughs> and uh, it actually goes uh, pretty... Uh, you, you, okay, it's not easy. It's actually really, really hard. As much as I'd like to say this is fun wood to work with, this is this is not fun wood to work with. <laughs> it is a, a pain. So after we, we shape out exactly what I want on the piece, we need to actually start rough cutting this. And for this, I'm gonna be grabbing my big buck saw. This cuts relatively quickly, though with the Epe, it dulls it very quickly as well. And, uh, Ooh, yeah, this is fun. Uh, this is actually a scrap that was brought back uh, from Brazil um, by uh, Luke, my videographer. He uh, was down there for a trip uh, ooh, about a year ago, and uh, he brought it back. It should be more than that. I think it was before COVID. Uh, so it's been in my shop for a little while, and I'm finally getting a chance to work on it. I, I want to cut it to a rough rectangular shape around the seat, and so some of that's ripping down, some of that's cross-cutting, and I'm not worried about quality, I'm just worried about getting it close, because there are three sides on this that have a flat space. And so for those, we can plane them down smooth. But for all the other spaces where there's curves, we're gonna do some relief cuts that go down to the line every inch, inch and a half or so. Uh, these go pretty quickly. And then we can take care of the majority of the work with a chisel. And this is actually a really, really fun part to pull out a chisel and just start popping these pieces out. Um, now, even with this Epe, this is um, quite a bit of, it's it's a hard wood. Um, I, I don't recommend using Epe for this unless you really want to be sharpening your tools all the time, which I ended up being quite a bit on this. Um, now, this isn't the wood I ended up going with in the end, and I'm kind of thankful for that, but uh, it was um, a, a good learning experience even for this amount. Um, yeah, I would, I would take white oak over this any day. For a lot of the detail work, we can come in with the spoke shave and the round bottom allows you to get in the interior curves and for all the exterior curves, we use a nice flat bottom. And uh, so you can see how this will pop out the pieces and make a nice rounded shape. It is a lot of work, but it is, um, it's kind of rewarding when you get down to it. It was around this point that I suddenly realized, wait a second, 
How am I going to make this thing swivel? The, the seat should swivel if I want the sculpted bottom. How am I going to do that? Hmm. So, um, we got this far. And then I realized it's going to mount to this. And so I'm going to be locked with this weird shape in any direction. And I want to be able to swivel it so that my rear end can face the direction I want it to face. But with this mount, there's no swivel. It, it attaches straight to it. And this shape needs swiveling. So let's make it again. So, so after doing that with Ipe, I realized I've got this beautiful chunk of cherry that is just big enough to get a circular seat out of. Uh, let's do cherry. Cherry's nice, and cherry is so much more enjoyable. Uh, this cherry is just delightful to work with. Uh, it is one of those hand tool woods that is solid and secure, but yet comfortable and smooth, and, and really works well with hand tools and doesn't dull them too quickly. And this was an absolute pleasure. So we're going to do basically the exact same thing we did before, uh, cutting it to a rough shape. Since it's a circle, we're going to basically turn it into a square and then lop the corners off into kind of an octagon, although it had some live edge sections that uh, ended up uh, making it more of a... Nine a gun, whatever that's called, <laughs> and and we're just gonna have a little bit of fun with this, getting it to its rough shape and chiseling it down. Um, I actually brought in my cheap junko saw for some of this because I occasionally like showing that yeah you can use cheap junky things and they will work, uh, especially the cross cuts from the big box store. They work very well. Uh, they don't the, they will last longer and a regular sharpening because they have hardened teeth but they are, you basically can't sharpen them. You, you can, but it takes uh, specialty tools. And then for the rest of it is round, and so this actually makes it very easy to either come in with smaller saws and cut it close to round and then chisel it out, or just chisel it out. Um, unfortunately, on this particular piece, I realized very quickly that the grain was going all over the place. There was a half knot on one side, and so one side it was going straight, and the other side it was going twisted, um, which made it very interesting. I had to be always watching the grain direction as I went around um, using the spoke shape to make sure I cleaned up um, in the right direction. I'd be doing, you know, three inches in one direction, and I'd have to switch into the other direction. Um, and I ended up having a, a slight problem in this, which you'll see a little bit later, where I uh, went a little bit too deep because the grain ran away with me, and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, it was going in the right direction in one spot and then suddenly changed. And so it's a lot of this going back around and you find that in some places it's faster to cut down with the saw and some places it's faster to come in with the chisel. A good Stanley 151 does amazing work here and it's a lot of fun. And it's right about here I realized this grain is going not the direction I want and then I've got this chip out that suddenly appeared that goes inside of the circle. So we're gonna have to work with this. And I'll just chalk it up to live edge. Um, but it's one of those odd spots where it just did not appear to have the, the grain going in the right direction. Uh, but oh well. Uh, once I get it close to the shape I want, it's not exactly down, I'm going to start flattening it out. Uh, there's a bit of a cup to this on one side and a bow on the other. So we're going to chalk it up between the dogs and flatten one side. And I don't care about it being perfectly flat. I just want it flat in appearance and feel. Um, and because the grain was switching, there were some places where I had to pull the plane or turn the block around uh, to make sure that I was going in the right direction. So one half I would plane one way and the other half I'd plane the other way. And then I could bring in the card scraper and uh, really clean this up. And cherry is just amazing for a card scraper. When you actually get it and it cuts out, oh, it's pleasant. Now, my original thought was I would use the compass plane because I don't get to use it very often. I don't use it all that much because there are very few uses. Unfortunately, this curvature was just a hair too small, and you can see it just wasn't fitting on there. It was causing me more rocking issues than it was worth. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to use the compass plane on this one. I always like when I get to use it. It's a fun plane. I've got a couple of videos showing how that's what it's for and how to use it, but uh, it is a very, very rare use plane and one I don't suggest people get unless they do a lot of curves. So instead of that, I'm going to come in with file, rasp, and, uh, and float and really smooth this out. You bring the flat, the rasp comes in and it gets rid of all the bumps and, and smooths things down. And then I can bring in the file and really detail it out. And if I need a little bit more work on it, I can use the float. I love the curved tail Narex floats. Um, I use those quite a bit. When it comes to this chipped out area, I just decided to treat it like a live edge and kind of detail it a little bit, clean it up. 
On the underside, I'm going to put on a tra chamfer, just a, a nice little quarter inch chamfer. The, uh, the 151 spoke shave does really quick work of that. You just have to be constantly switching direction because the grain on this goes all over the place. On the top side though, I don't want a chamfer. I want a nice rounded edge to uh, cushion my bottom. And uh, so for that, you start with a chamfer and then you roll the spoke shave to one side and then you roll it to the other side and it goes pretty quickly to get a nice rounded edge. Then to detail it out, I'm going to come in with a file and uh, use that to roll the edge down and get a really clean edge. Now I'm going to be using sandpaper on this because I want to work the dust into the pores. Uh, that will allow me to get a deeper penetration on the oil. Um, especially with cherry, I like it to bring out the, the different colors in there. Almost that, that blotchy look that you don't like with stain. I love that look with boiled linseed oil on the cherry. Um, and so sanding it allows you to see more of that contrast. Um, and it, it will create more of that blotchiness. So if you don't like the blotchiness, don't sand it. Just use it fresh from the, the plane. Um, but for me, I, I'm wanting that. For the finish on this, of course, this is my channel. So we're using boiled linseed oil, the homemade stuff, so I can use my hand on it. And I'm just going to let it soak in. And this cherry just soaked up a ton of it. Um, I did, what, three or four coats um, live, and I've since put on another six or seven uh, because it just keeps soaking it up. Once it fully soaks up and it's not taking up any more, uh, then I'm going to hit it with some paste wax and clean it up. And that is the, the seat itself. So now we need to go back over to the frame, which I painted. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on camera. Um, that is, um, just imagine me spray painting. I used a uh, self-etching primer and then my standard blue metallic paint. Uh, if you want to see more on that, I did a video just restoring a, uh, a post drill, and I covered all of that information on there. So we're going to screw it down in place. Make sure you pre-drill all the screws. And uh, use earplugs to fill the holes so that I don't get paint inside there. Uh, making sure you then oil them nicely so that you don't get squeaky, squeaky, squeaky um, and, and fit it in. So I want to make sure I have the ability to put that in. I don't want to run into the bench above, so I have to move it in far enough that I can do that. And then I'm going to adjust it to a bench uh, a stool that I currently have so I know how high I want it to be. And then make a mark. Once the mark has been made, then we can come in and pre-drill a quarter inch hole. I started with this twist bit and then realized I need to drill in about two and a half inches. I'm going to go over to my quarter inch auger bit, um, which is a far superior choice for this. Then once that is in place, we can put in the lag screw um, and I have a driver bit that I can then put on my brace. One of the few times where I actually use the ratcheting action on my brace is when I want to put a lot of torque on it. Um, or I need to put in it. So I can do it fast with that, but if I really want to get torque, I can go back and forth making sure the handle is just in the right spot. And then put the pin in and it's done. Uh, this actually took a lot of wiggling to get it in place. Um, I had to go underneath and look at it and move around and find out where it needs to go and I'm tapping it back and forth and finally found the, the hole for it. I ended up having to lay on the floor um, looking up underneath to actually see uh, where is the pin and suddenly it just popped down in and it was like, oh, there it goes. That was easy. <laughs> uh, but once it's in place, that's it. It's done. Um, other than the fact I'm probably going to be tweaking it, I'm probably going to move it over to the other leg. I want to move where the seat is on it, but it is a lot of fun to play with, and I'm looking forward to using this for a long time to come. Happy! Be careful that one. So there you have it. Um, I've wanted one of these for a long time. Benchcraft has a kit that I think is really, really cool. I've just never been able to pull myself to it. Um, at a recent MWTCA meet, I was able to pick this one up. Uh, it's from an old school where they would have all of these, and so I can hang this out here and have it over that way, or I can pull it out and work on this side. Um, a few people are going to ask why I didn't put it on the other side of the bench where I'm normally working. Um, that's because um, I wanted to have it on this side first to experiment with it. I don't know if I want the seat out this far, if I want to pull it back in a little bit. Um, I was hoping I could get out a little farther so I could work around the end of the bench, um, but where it's at right now, I'm working more on the side of the bench. So I'm kind of playing with a few things on here and where I like its actual position to be. That's one of the reasons why I went down to the circular because um, I don't know how my rear end is going to be placed on this. So I'm having a little bit of fun experimenting and trying new things. So I've had this black stool in my shop, and it's probably still going to be here because it still has uses in other places. But it's nice to have this on the bench that I can just swing out and put it back. It doesn't take up any floor space. I like this. 
So I hope you like this rather simple, easy build. Uh, it's one of those things that just doesn't have a lot to it because most of it's hardware. You just gotta make the seat. Uh, but that's a lot of fun. So if you did like it, please let me know in the comments. If you didn't like it, let me know that as well. I always like to hear your ideas and learn new things. So if there's something you think I should do better, please let me know that. It really does help out the channel if you hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who's scrolling on the side back here. That really does help out the channel. Uh, they are all patrons on Patreon or members here on the channel. And I do want to say a huge thank you to all of you because without members and patrons, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more, there's links to Patreon down below or click that little join button and become a member here on YouTube. And I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. As a kid, I used to think the words were swing low, sweet cherry seed.